Hello again everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'd first like to say thank you to everyone for subscribing. I'm actually topped 900 subscribers, so I should be hitting 1,000 in a week or two. That's a pretty cool milestone. Um, I'd also think it's in uh, thanks and appreciation to Instructables for entering me into one of their contests, and I'm actually a finalist as well. I should say Nova is a finalist as well. So next week we'll find out if she takes that prize. Pretty cool. Anyhow, moving on. Um, yes, as shown in my last video, I have taken out all of her electronics, as you can see. She's now Naked Nova, as we're calling her. Nothing left on her but her servos. Um, and then all of the electronics now are connected and running, and including the nano circuit. So to briefly, oops, sorry about that glare there. So to briefly talk about this, yes, what I ended up doing is not using the OLED display in her head, but getting an SBI display. So now the Nano is a slave on the I squared C bus and not trying to be a master at the same time. So the Nano controls the display, the SBI display, and then I also have even breadboarded the dimmer for the RGB lights, as well as the switch to turn the display on and off. Boy, that glare was a fail, wasn't it, guys? Sorry about that. So if I go ahead and turn the display off, you could do that to save battery or what have you if you wanted to. Uh, these two controls, this is actually a small uh, screwdriver adjustable pot, and this switch is really tiny, as you can see. They go inside of her head, so they're nowhere that user accessible. You have to remove her lid if you wanted to turn the display off or dim the RGBs. <coughs> so, yes, her RGBs are still connected to the Nano right now. They're active and live, but the RG, the sorry, the OLED is not because that's replaced with this one now. Which let's turn this back on. And then the ultrasonic sensors in her head are all connected and running as well. So that completes the Nano circuit. Okay, and then yes, the Nano is connected to I2. I squared C, which is <coughs> my little terminal block here, which also is connected to the PWM controller, and then as well as the MPU unit, which I've shown in a previous video. That's up and running, no problem. Let's see if you can see my hand movement at the same time. Okay, so then yes, like I said, I've gone ahead and connected the nano circuit, and you can see the ultrasonic sensor readings right there. I'll put my hand in front of them. They're a little inaccurate, as I showed in a previous video, because of this design. Oops, I think they're a little bit obstructed by that center frame. But good news is I do have to tear that head apart and use my newer printed one, which the angles are a little adjusted a bit to hopefully fix that and compensate for it. But yes, you can see it's running. And then what I have here, I have also connected those three PIR sensors that I showed off in another video where I was going to do a like a follow routine. Excuse me for a sec. What I dropped here was um, a box that I'm just covering the left and right ones with for now. Just so it's not a nuisance to test, so just the front one is exposed. So, there have been some comments along the, through this project about why do you use Omega, you're going to run into problems, you can't handle all of this, and you know, I have to give everybody credit, they are absolutely right. And I kind of knew that going into this, and still appreciate the challenge of such things, is trying to make it work, so, collectively. So I, I didn't back down, I pushed forward, and I'm still going to push forward. Yes, breaking the Nano out was to help the Mega manage all of these sensors and all of these things going on, and it is doing a great job. Um, but I will show you in a sec that there is a bit of a delay if I try and run her motors in, in a steady pace march. This is running every second right now, and once in a while it will interrupt her march for a split second, and, and she's right back in, in control again. So that is obviously the Mega's 
limited ability to multitask. Now, I can tweak a lot of that in code by setting certain times delays for certain things, well not delays, but the, the state machines adjusting things so that things don't fire at the same time. Because right now I have these PIR sensors active, the ultrasonic sensors active, and then obviously the, the rudimentary hardware that she uses to function, like the RGB lights, the OLED screen, and the um, controller, the PS2 controller. This, however, is not active at the moment. Obviously, I'm not using a remote at this, at this very moment. But I will go ahead and put her into follow mode, which I was working on before I decided to tear her electronics out. And there she goes. So she's following as the front sensor sees me standing here. And you can see she's still pulling her readings here. And if I try and get her to really read those readings... There you go. So that little hiccup that she takes... So now, the motors, the piece, or I should say the PWM controller, is battling with the Nano on the I2, I2 C bus. And occasionally the motors will lose out for that split second, so that the OLED and the ultrasonic sensors can respond. So, like I said, w with some software coding and some time different differentials between and adjusting things a bit, um, I could even remove the state machines to such things and include them in the motor control code so that when she's done taking a full step, then the sensor will fire and she'll continue with her next step. Uh, if it fires in, in mid-step, I'm sure we'll see that skip. But see, and depending on the gate as well, there are going to be pauses, there are going to be delays where it would be safe to fire off a sensor. Because obviously all these things run in milliseconds, but it's the point of them colliding with each other that the Mega needs that split second to catch up with itself, and it's showing itself. But, another good part of this whole discussion is it's going to be rare to fire all these sensors at once. Like, I will probably never have the PIR sensors running, and the ultrasonic sensors running, and the MPU unit run all at the same time while she's walking, even kind of thing. So, yes, it would be a nice to have, but again, from my initial statement of this discussion, it was my choice to continue with Arduino Mega and not try and scrap all this and learn Raspberry Pi and do that or try with an ESP like others have tried and, you know, I'm happy with her still. But just to let everybody know, yes, we are going to have issues getting all these sensors and things timed together and working together and etc. But that's the beauty of this project to me, everyone, so bear with me. Alright, so, what else? Um, a couple of things, yes, while I was in the nano circuit, you know what, let me quiet her down. <laughs> while I was playing with the nano circuit, I did go ahead and add a little more code so that some of the settings to turn sensors on and off, and then the startup screen, you know, I, have, I show a picture of Nova and all that fun stuff, you can turn that on and off, the splash screen I'm calling it. Um, so what I've done is I've written those to EEPROM now on the nano. So you can make the settings, setting changes in the mega code, upload that code, and it'll automatically update the nano for us. So no more having to pop the nano out to recode it just to turn things on and off. So here's the new SPI display. It's now full color, which is pretty cool. Um, it's not as high a resolution. The previous one was 128 by 64. This is 96 by 64. But I'll make that trade for the extra colors. Uh, so yeah, the intro is there, and like I said, it can be turned on and off now with settings that you can adjust in the code, and then it'll write to the EEPROM on the Nano, so there's no need to edit code on that anymore to turn on and off devices. So in order to help manage the bus problems that I still am experiencing, which yes is mostly the Mega's fault, but it's still part of the I2, I2 C bus. So I am showed this in my previous video, the TCA9546 or 8. Sorry, I'm getting old. I can't see. <laughs> 8. Um, <laughs> this is an I2 C bus controller. I, th I explained in my previous video, so I won't now. But I think I'm going to he head and test this out and see if it has any impact or effect on controlling not letting things fire at the same exact time. Um, 
my only concern is yes when the motors are firing there's not much time in between those motors firing so I really think that's the problem and this is not going to have any effect at all but I'm still willing to wire it up and, and give it a shot and see if it helps um, and a couple of people have posted here and on Instructables um, with their concern and their you know genuine knowledge and, and they got it right the, the weight is definitely a problem which as you all know who've been watching my videos I've known from the get-go that's why we've gone ahead and extended her and and yes it's still slight bit of an issue and I think it's not so much the servos themselves though that is part of it but this joint right here like I've also shown this there's no bearing it's really just hanging on that servo horn so we I think we lose a lot of power with that um, I was looking at it and thinking well we could actually redesign this knuckle here to kind of have a overshoot shoulder that could then carry a bearing here and that would beefen this up and hold that leg much better but uh, I'm not gonna go there <laughs> and then somebody else posted which I will put a link to his project in the description because I was pretty impressed from his short video what he showed me um, the stability of the way his moves and walks is so clearly better than this one and the reason being he said and I didn't look very closely at it that he doubled up all of these servos. So he actually has two here, two here, and two here for, for all of the legs. So you can imagine, wow, that's some power and some strength. And yeah, so yes, I am still happy with her, like I said, but let me tell you guys, right now she weighs four pounds. That's with all of her servos and all of her plastic, minus the two thin shell pieces, which probably don't amount much to much, and her innards, the, the chassis, which I've now reprinted as one piece rather than three pieces, and I also printed it 100%, which I realized, well, I could see why Nova's pretty heavy. I mean, that's several grams right there, just that one piece. So, that being said, she is right now exactly four pounds as is, with none of her electronics other than the servo. Servos. So that means between the head and the rear piece and then all of this electronics and her battery, there's another two pounds sitting right here on this board. So yes, we have weight issues and it'll affect her walking gates and her balance and such. But again, as I've said in many videos at this point and in discussions with some of you, it's the challenge of all this that I get enjoyment out of. This is just a hobby. I have no degrees in any of this stuff. So... I do it for, again, the challenge and the fulfillment of that. All right, um, so I am going to continue what I'm doing here with this out-of-body experience, and I'm going to make test all my hardware components individually. Then, yes, I'm going to play around with the timing of them and how they're used and try and get that as smooth as I can possibly, obviously in conjunction with our servos, the PWM controller. And then I'm going to, I've already done this once, I'm going to write some software tests and just let them run. I've actually wrote a test to test the OLED, the nano circuit, while she's walking. And I ran it for, yeah, probably about an hour and a half. And she took some five, six thousand steps. And not once did she fail. So I know now that, yes, that using the nano as both a slave and a master on that same I squared C bus is what the problem was. So that problem is absolutely solved now by using an SPI screen instead on the nano. Okay. All right, guys. So that's all I have for you for this update. Uh, stay tuned. I'm not sure what my next video will be. Uh, if the tests are interesting enough and I really want to show that everything is working solid and that I've gotten the timers much better than they are now, although as you've just seen through that little demo I gave you guys, she hiccuped just one little time in all of that. So I don't consider it bad, but I can see that if things are not timed right or if we push things to the limit, yeah, the, the mega will hiccup on us quite often. So yes, the next video will probably be of my hardware tests and clean wiring. I know I've said that's the whole point of me doing this, but because it's sitting here and not vibrating, all these DuPont connectors and ugly terminal blocks is perfectly fine. But I do have new wire, new ter terminal blocks, and I have a shielded cable for the I2C squared line. So yeah, we'll get some rewiring going on. 
And at that time I will also step through the wiring diagram and the assembly of all these components and how I'm going to choose to wire them, what I'll solder, what I won't, because there has been some questions about um, my wire diagram, block diagram, because yeah, it's not the greatest. And I blame that on software, as I've also explained. Okay, everyone, thanks again for subscribing and getting me to almost a thousand subscribers. Super fun. Talk to you all soon.